Second Timothy in chapter 2, in the same connection. It says, my son be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, Paul tells Timothy. Meaning that, Timothy, if you really want to serve God, you've got to have a sufficiency for every situation, particularly those of us who are serving the Lord in some type of position of responsibility. And I tell you, to serve the Lord is not easy. It's one of the most difficult jobs. It's the most difficult job that anybody can ever have. The President of the United States has got a pretty easy task compared to a man who's serving God. He's tackling terrorists. We are tackling the devil and demons. Who is more powerful? Have you got any doubt whether demons are more powerful or terrorists are more powerful? A servant of God is tackling demons, <clears throat> the devil. And he's got the most difficult task of all. And the more effective you are as, a, are as a servant of God, the more you are the target of the devil. Sure, he tries every possible way to knock you down, but grace is sufficient. I mean, if grace was not available, we'd all be knocked out long ago. Grace is sufficient to warn us in advance of the tricks of Satan, to prepare us for every attack of the enemy that we need not fall. Why is it you hear of so many servants of God, suddenly they've been preaching for 30 years, suddenly they fall into sin and sexual sin? How is that possible? It's because they have neglected the grace of God. They have not understood the grace of God. The grace of God is sufficient for every need. You can be the target of a million demons. The grace of God is sufficient for that. You must believe it. I believe with all my heart. The grace of God is sufficient for anything that the devil can try on me. You must have that faith. The devil can't put any sickness on me that the grace of God will not help me to overcome. The devil cannot tempt me with anything which the grace of God cannot help me to overcome. The devil cannot bring anybody against me which the grace of God will not help me to overcome. I am going to be an overcomer till the day Jesus comes. Not because of myself, but by the grace of God. Very often Christians say, oh, by the grace of God I did that. They don't even mean what they say. Grace is a powerful thing. Sufficient for every single need. And grace can strengthen our heart to live for God. Okay, number four. Titus 2 verse 11 and 12. Number four. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 and 12. Grace teaches us to deny ourselves. See Titus chapter 2 verse 11. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men and instructing us to deny ungodliness, to deny worldly desires, to live sensibly, to live righteously, to live godly in the present age. How is it I say no to those worldly fashions that I see Christians around me have? Grace of God, that's all. I'm not here to, how is it I don't judge them also? Grace of God. When the grace of God comes into you, you don't follow those worldly fashions, fashions and you don't judge other people who do follow them. If you don't follow them yourself but you judge them, you didn't really get grace. It could be legalism. But if you don't follow them and you don't judge them, then you really got grace. Have you got that? Or have you got a legalistic attitude where you do something right but judge everybody else who does it wrong? Do you know that I can look at people who do things, many things differently from me and not judge them at all? I, I don't celebrate Christmas. I don't judge anybody who does. I can go to a house where they're dancing around a Christmas tree and, well, God bless them. That's the light they have. They're doing it for the glory of God. Fine. I don't have to, I don't have to do that myself. I have no problem with these things. I don't care if a woman is decked with gold. It's not my business to judge her. I don't do it myself. And the same thing with so many things. I'm not here to judge anyone. If they want to go that way and live that way, that's their business. If they want to spend their money that way, that's their business. If they want to live like that, it's their business. I don't follow them, I don't judge them. That's what grace does. And if you've really got grace, that's the way you'll go. Otherwise, you'll be a legalist till the day Jesus comes and get a big surprise when he comes. That you thought you were so holy. And the Lord said, you're worse than those people. You say, Lord, I was worse than those people? Sure. How? You, you spent your life judging them. You're the biggest legalist of all. Don't get that surprise when Christ comes. The grace of God teaches us to deny this ungodliness and deny these worldly desires and to live sensibly, 
righteously and godly in this present age as a God-fearing person. It's the grace of God that makes us God-fearing. Number five, Colossians 4 and verse 6. Colossians 4 and verse 6, the grace of God makes us gracious in our speaking, in our speech. Colossians 4, 6 says, let your speech always be with grace. That means there's grace in my conversation. I'm not rude to people. Jesus was strong in his speech, but he was not rude. You need to distinguish between being strong and being rude. Rude is where you insult somebody, where you deliberately humiliate him. Strong, Jesus was very strong, and the strongest uh, person I've ever heard speaking is Jesus Christ, because he loved us so much. But he was never rude. And we must not be rude to our children, we must not be rude to anybody. You must not be rude to your wife or your husband or anyone. There may be times when we have to be strong in our speech. Let your speech always be with grace. There must be grace in the way we speak. Grace that it says here, that you know exactly how you should respond to each person. It's not a standard way. Jesus, one person would come to him and Jesus would speak to him in one way. Another person would come to him and speak to him another way. We need grace to know how shall I speak to this person how shall I speak to this person? How shall I speak to this hypocrite? And how shall I speak to this sincere falling disciple? World of difference. I need grace to discern, to know how to speak to this person, how to speak to the other person. And how to speak to the fellow who's trying to pretend that he wants to be a Christian. And he's a religious fanatic who's just come into the church pretending to be a Christian to sneak in to destroy the church. How to speak to that person and how to speak to this other person who is a sincere falling disciple who is trying to struggle and struggle and struggling to follow the Lord. <clears throat> to, to, to speak to each person, how to speak to a child, how to speak to each person. <clears throat> then number six, 2 Corinthians 8 verses 1 to, 9, 1 to 19. It says here about grace makes us generous with our money. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. And he goes on to say in that whole chapter, Now I pray that you will also, verse 1, I want to make known to you the grace of God, which has been given to the churches of Macedonia, that in a great ordeal of affliction, in their deep poverty, they overflowed in the wealth of their liberality. That means even though they were poor, they gave money for, to help the poor believers. Grace makes us generous to help the poor. Grace makes us, frees us from being tight-fisted with our money, teaches us to give. If you are still tight-fisted and miserly with your money, you, that's one aspect of the grace of God you have not experienced. You may be getting a lot. There are some people who just get and get and get and get and get and get. They are the poorest believers of all. They don't realize it. Poorest believers of all. The richest believers I've met on the face of the earth are the ones who are generous and who have learned to give. They are the most blessed because the word of God is fulfilled. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And lastly, number seven, is grace helps us to exercise a specific gift in the body of Christ. Romans 12 Verse 6 says that <clears throat> to each person we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. To some prophecy, to some service, to some teaching, some exhortation, some to give money, some to be leaders. It's a grace to exercise a particular gift. That is also grace. The charisma, as it says, from which you get the word charismatic, is a Greek word which means gifts of grace. Charis is gift, charisma is gifts of grace, from which you get the word charismatic. Gifts that God gives me through his grace to enable me to do what? To communicate grace to other people. I would never be able to preach if God had not given me the gift of prophecy to be able to communicate grace to other people, not just instruct people in their head. 
but to communicate grace. And I want to say to you, it says here, listen carefully. Each of us is given. Grace is given to each of us. Different measure, different type of gifts. You've got to exercise it. Finally, we know the well-known verse in 1 Peter 5.5. 5, God gives his grace to the humble. In each situation, if you humble yourself and say, Lord, I want to go down. I don't want to go up in the eyes of the world or in the eyes of the church. I want to go down. You'll find Jesus there and you'll find grace. You know, the devil's greatest aim is to make you think highly of yourself. To think, ah, brother, see the way God is using you now? Some people despised you. But see how he's using you now? Fool that you are to listen to the devil. You're doomed. Tell the devil to shut up. You're not going to listen to him. Go down. And every day and every year, go deeper and deeper down. And the grace of God will be abundant on you. You don't have to convince anybody that God is with you or he's using you. They'll see it. They'll be blessed. And when they are blessed, be careful that you don't get puffed up. Go further down. Okay, <clears throat> let's just pray for a moment. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we pray that these words will sink into our hearts and we will receive what you want us to receive. Grace to meet every need in our life, to be overcomers, to experience the true grace of God and never to use it as a license to sin. We pray in Jesus' name.